Welcome back. This is You Think It, We Speak It. I'm Jerry with my brother, Brian. Hey, what's up, guys? A.K.A. Mr. Henny Colada for the day. That's my nickname. New nickname alert. You didn't even drink Henny or had a colada. Yeah. It's Henny Colada. Just Your nickname has to go with wha- who you are. I'm going to explain it. Henny Colada, um, you know, because I'm the kid who has the brown skin but sounds like a white boy. So Henny Colada. Henny Colada. Bro, did we get the sound effects for this yet? No. Because we need a boo. Once again, because this kid keeps coming up with some corny ass AKAs, nicknames for himself. You know what I'm I put surprised. you know what I put on my <laughs> You know what I put on my bio? I couldn't really think of anything. Straight up, direct, I put the kid with a beard and curls. That's on my of, IG bio. Yeah, but there's a lot of people. You just, who you describe? You describe Myself, me. like the kid with a. If you look at my okay. pictures, I have a beard and the I have curly hair. The, the beard and curly hair. Who? Post yeah, Malone. I put on my bio. You know, like you're gonna go down my picture, All so right. you're gonna see. Right. See, and it made sense, and it was direct to the point. You over here, piña colada, uh, henny, henny, henny colada. colada. Let me get the margarita mixed with a little bit of. Champagne Papi Colada. Like, nigga. You said Papi Colada twice. Nigga. It's called creativity, Stop bro. with that nonsense. Creativity. So what are we here to talk about? So what are we here to talk? You sound like me every episode. Just get straight into it, man. What would you... Um, so, nah, this is a show that if you guys haven't, haven't seen us already, it's a show that involves two brothers and we talk about our everyday lives, we talk about relationships, and we talk about the latest trends. So if I was you, I'll I'll stick in because we get nasty over here. We get it crazy. We get it poppin'. You feel me? Nah, but we talk our talk. So, so let's get into talk. it. Yeah. So let's get so right into it because I'm jump yeah. Right into it. Um, you know, on Instagram. No, the other day I was just scrolling through one of my apps where like you know where I look for to get news besides IG, and on this app I saw a video that caught my attention and I brought it up to yours. It was a guy who was just taking his train, taking a train, a subway, but um, somehow I don't know if he was looking at his phone. I don't know what he was looking at. He gets stuck in between the uh, the point where you're like getting in the train and right off the platform. That little cr- that crack or that little space between the train and the platform, his foot got stuck in there, um, and it was so bad that like they needed to get the conductor to stop, make sure he wasn't going to move the train. Delayed the whole train, um, and it was so like his foot was just so in there. They needed to get almost half the train, half the people on the train, to collectively push this train to wedge his foot free. I thought that was dope, and um, you know, the the caption from that video was the power of unity. So today's episode is gonna be a lot of that, the power of unity. And let's start it off. So, yo, what'd you fact, think when I showed you that? The fact that that guy literally had his his foot stuck in the in the in the subway right in between when you step onto the train is crazy. Like, how small is his foot? Because how do you get it stuck in, in that little crevice? I would be like, uh, it's very easy, bro. I don't know if you're I, taking the subway, bro. I've taken several in some, a minute, bro. And the, you, I've, I, I've taken several uh, train station trains. And so you should and know you that. And you can't, and you, like, there's no way you'll miss that. He probably, that's the thing. He probably wasn't paying attention, bro. It looked like from the video, he was either looking at some magazine. There was something in his hand. Magazine or maybe his phone took his mind off things. And it's, bro, it's literally like one, two, three. Just, you're not paying attention. It's like stepping in a pothole. Like, you could really, you could fuck up. <laughs> and that's no, what he, but you <laughs> that's what he did. Luckily, those people there to get him, though. Yeah, I you mean, know? a pothole in that is different because it's not like you could just get right out, you know, from the mm-hmm. pothole, from the train, that crevice. You no, know, you could lose your whole foot and die. Like, imagine, like, the fact that... But he didn't. That I know, the thing. fact that everybody came out, what I liked about the thing was everybody came out and uh, pushed the train. It looked like some some real, you know, um, right there, it looked like some, some movie type shit, like where everyone comes out, and oh, we gotta help you! We gotta help you! And everybody's shoving it the other way to take his foot out. 
And at first, I didn't think that would be enough to wedge his foot out the the subway. I mean, the, out the train. Yeah, me neither. Crevice. But there was a lot of people pushing that train. But the strength subway. of everybody, it was a collective unit. If I was, I mean, joking around, I would have been like, whoa, I'm staying in my seat. Like, this nigga, he better take that foot out by himself. Mm-hmm. But the seeing the severity of it, I would have been, I would have felt bad. I would have, I would have helped him out. Me too. In the beginning, a lot of people were sitting in their seats because they thought it was just like, oh, okay. Um, no one really kind of knew. You could tell what was happening, but I guess, you know, it was just like word of mouth. And this guy needs help. Come on, somebody push this with me. After one person's pushing, you got a whole team before you know it. It makes you, I, it made me think like, Living in this world where we always like fending for ourselves, and now it's like more of like a selfish type of world, and we're like, I get my own, you know, the way I get it. Like it's uh, fuck the other kid coming up. As as I'm getting the shine, I'm getting the moment to to do me. Uh, very individualistic way of thinking. We need more of that unity in this world now, yeah, don't you think? No, I, I, I agree. It definitely helps more than it hurts to have that. Yeah, because I, I'd be like, yo, sometimes we we so in, a, in the world, like, we so much into our own world, like, we don't care about that other person who may be struggling. Or we don't care about that other person who may not be struggling but may not be mentally there because something occurred in their life. You know what I'm saying? Something traumatic or or something not very severe but they're just not there that day. We don't care because we're we're too busy distracted by what we want. And I think sometimes that's not always good. Always just focusing on you and you and you. You need that unselfishness in order to understand and have empathy for the others that are around you because you're not in this world by yourself. You're here with a bunch of people if you haven't seen you know, it's funny you bring that up because I was just finishing watching um, a show, a Facebook show um, with Jada Pinkett Smith, my future wife. And um, <laughs> she had on the show, it was like episode three, it was her and Gabrielle Union. And they were talking, you know, they were building, rebuilding their relationship because from the past something happened where they fell off and they couldn't even remember it. That's how crazy it was or far back it was. Um, but... Through the conversation, you know, they brought up that new, that unity thing and how tiring it could be when you are the person who's just always giving. So this was the other side of that spectrum um, because she was talking about how in the beginning of her life when she met Will, Will Smith, it came with a lot of sacrifice. She had to give up, like, really sacrifice her whole acting acting career and put that aside and... When she wasn't doing that, she had to raise the kids. And Yo, that's the Prince of Bel-Air. She wasn't doing that. <laughs> that's the Prince of Bel-Air. Of course, it comes with a lot of sacrifice. But, you know, you do that so much, you know, and you try to fill up this persona of giving, 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 because that's what a good person is seeing in society. A good person gives back. Yeah. And she was saying how through all that, she was losing herself. I thought that was like, that hit me. I was like, wow, that's deep. That it, it got to the point where she almost lost herself because she gave almost everything to that other she person. Was, yeah, she was being a pleaser. Yeah, and not and not saying no. So I think that that's something too you got to think about. Like it's hard to say no sometimes because you think, damn, this person's not gonna respect me or I might damage a, a relationship. relationship. Yeah, yeah. There. Um, but you also got so you do got to be selfish. And think about, damn, do I really want to do this? Do I really want to bring um, a dozen cupcakes to tomorrow's, I don't know, what you guys do at the high school or the middle school, just so, you know, people see me that I'm contributing. Even though I know I can't really do it, it's going to be a burden on me. I could easily say no, but you choose not to. Yeah, you need to to walk that fine line in, in knowing how unselfish you can be and how selfish you can be. Mm-hmm. At specific times, you can't just be, you know, you can't be blindly selfish. You can't just, you know, just be selfish because you want to be selfish. I mean, you can. 
I'm not going to say you can't because you're your own person. But, like, me personally, I don't feel good when I'm always selfish. I feel like like I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to gather up all my chips and just keep it to myself. But let me let me give a, a Dorito to you. Let me give a Dorito to this kid. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it doesn't I'm not going to, you know, starve to death if I, if I have three less Doritos. But maybe if I had out of a pie. Three less slices, maybe I starve. <laughs> like, like we were talking about yesterday at the Super Bowl party we had here. Oh, if, remember how you were saying, my brother was saying. So to give the um the backstory, we we had a Super Bowl party at my house. Just like three, four friends, not crazy. We're not popular like that. But my brother was saying before we ordered, he was like, "Yo, to be honest with you, bro, we should just all order our own boxes." And just call it a day, and then, you know, whatever. Just f- everybody fends for themselves. I didn't say that. <laughs> see, you see, and I'm just like, like, let me finish. You let me finish. Sprinkle in let some me just bullshit. Finish. And I'm over here like worse than it was. I didn't. I'm say I'm over that here like, time. yo, like, that's oh, these selfish. Imagine being at the game, and you know, you got your boys, and you inviting people to your crib, and you're like, yo, let me get a slice of pizza. Let me get a slice of your pizza. You gotta go up to him to ask you first. Let me get a slice of your pizza. And this kid's probably, like, all over it, like, nah, I'm going to think about it. I got, like, two slices left. Nah. Nah, it's looking like a dub. What? That's so it's so that's so selfish. That's so, like, nasty. It's just like, nah, I can't be that cheap. You know what I'm saying? If people are coming to my crib, if I, I got to show that hospitality, I got to be that person. You know, I got to be the host. We got to be the host. And that's why I was like, yo, let's buy four boxes in case... Someone, you know, is like, yo, let me eat. Let me eat, like, six slices today. Um, and everybody chipped in their piece, and it was a good It was a good time. It was a good time, yeah. Because I like, I, lo- I love it when we dead ass, you know, I love sharing moments. Imagine sharing it by yourself, you know? Uh, let me just not go to the movie theater because I could just watch it here. Uh, let me not just go to the baseball game because I could really just watch it right here in my room. You know, oh, let me let me not invite people, you know, because I don't want to be rowdy and shit in my house and be dirty. I could just watch it right here in my own living room. Imagine just that way of thinking, like you just doing that by yourself and on your own. That sounds peaceful to me. That sounds lonely, bro. I mean, not that every is, day. Yeah, you got to have some balance. Lonely. I got to be, so, I'm a social butterfly. I got to fly, yeah, bro. Right. I got to fly. And I got to really, sh- I like sharing moments with people. I like I think that's the biggest thing in life, like the fact that we can share moments and, and and remember the moments we had with people. Like, oh, I remember when we went to Miami and we did this, this, and the third. You know, I remember when we went on the road trip and I did it with this, this person, and the third. The moments are better shared than being okay, a, but being you see, you're bringing yourself. you're bringing up examples that everybody would agree with. Yeah, I would like to go on a vacation with other people. Who wouldn't? That's just obvious. But sometimes, you know. I think there's a fine line between spending moments with your friends and et cetera and just wasting time, you know, killing time in a room of people that you know, <laughs> that you're familiar with. Like, yeah, that game we watched last night where people that we haven't seen in a minute, it was cool to just catch up. Yo, how you doing? How's how's life? How's that job treating you? Yo, what are you looking forward to? You about to finish school. How's that feel? Cool. Now, if I see you every day, 24-7, and I, you know, you asked me to come watch this basketball game in this regular season or a baseball game, and it's, it's not even a postseason. Bro, you're just doing to, it. Just to watch Bro, the game. Bro, you're doing it. Shut up. You're doing it. No. When, when you went here. Just to I, watch the game. I, actually, I would actually. Continue. I would be like, nah, you know what? I'd rather, I'd rather finish that book that I'm reading. Or, you know what I'm saying? I'd rather practice my Chinese that I haven't done in a while. Well, you never, you're never going to learn Chinese. And that's that's said that me no that's it that's done <laughs> fing I've finished learned, I've learned a good end. portion of it what are you talking about now you have I'm not gonna, you know what I love that you keep going and, and you're consistent you're persistent but I put a bet on today like you that shit is never you're never gonna be a bi, a bilingual Chinese on, man you're never we, gonna be that I mean I'll take it as motivation so <laughs> take it take it but what I, I was gonna I was talking about unity and you over here throwing shade like <laughs> yeah i know sometimes you gotta throw shade in, in unity conversations but what sense. i was gonna tell you was um damn i lost my train of thought we were talking about the game like yo the mic. talking about the game 
Nah, I lost my train of thought. But it was it was deep. It was gonna be something for you to I watch basketball games in here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you say that you you do it by yourself and be peaceful, but on the other hand, you you invite Gio. You picked that up for me too. Every time I I you know there's a game on that I know that um you know it's like a big basketball game or oh, sports game, sporting yeah. event or whatever it is maybe a regular season big game. I'm always inviting like uh, Gio into my room or sometimes my brother, but my brother's not that big of a sports person. But you know he'll watch it and um, and I'll be like, yo, let's let's grab halal food, let's grab something, let's eat in my room, chill, because that's where the TV's at. And sooner or later, you guess who copies me? My brother, and I. I <laughs> this, <laughs> he'll be making food. He'll make a whole dish for for himself, or whatever. Prepare it. And be knocking on Gio's door. Doom, 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 doom. Yo, it's almost 8.30. The Celtics and the Warriors are about to play. You didn't know? Dang, you're not, re- you're not a real sports fan. Nah. But if you want, you we can watch this in my room. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, I like that, though. Like, you actually, you know, you may not be the biggest fan in sports, but you share those moments between try, you and yeah, some. Try. You try to be social. Between you and, you know, your friend watching a sporting event. I try, yeah. So I see you spreading your wings, and I like that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, It'll be funny. Yeah, no, nah, I try just to at least uh, join the party sometimes. And just, it's always good to, even if you don't know, I think that shows a lot of great, uh, shows great effort and just, like, dedication to whatever relationship you're in, a friendship that you're at least trying it, you know? I might not care about golf or um, you playing, you know, instruments and stuff like that. But I'll check out, like, oh, what's going on in that in that industry, just so that we can have that conversation, you mm-hmm. know, if it if it does pop up. Yeah. And it just brings at the end of the day, it it'll bring you and whoever you're with closer. Yeah. Because now there's another, you know, here's another thing we could bond over. You know what I'm saying? So. Mm-hmm. And that's such a mature way of looking at it because. It throws down your selfish guard, you know? Yeah. Nah, whatever I like, we got to watch. It's like, nah, you know, you're interested in this. I'll put my, my guard down in order to, to be with you, to to see where this can go, to share that mm-hmm. conversation about it, to learn from it. And it just shows that you're growing, bro. You're making me want a tear right now. Yeah. Hold the tears. Hold the tears. Looking into... Because I got something, a story that I wanted to share with you, too, what? of um another podcast I've been listening to. And I suggest other people listen to this to maybe listen to this this podcast called Modern Love. And it's a basically it's just a podcast about, you know, stories, actual stories of love, um, redemption, breakups and stuff like that. So on one story, um, the narrator reads about uh, how a father of two, no, father of four. And, you know, the genders vary, but a son and a daughter who for the longest time didn't tell the guy that they were gay. And bro, the the kids were like, now they're like in their sixties and the father was way, way, you know, old, but he came from an older generation. So for the longest time they were afraid to, to tell them the truth. Yeah. Um, and so the brother, cause the brother and the sister were gay. Both of them were. And the brother was the first one to tell to come out the closet. And the way he did it was by writing his dad a letter. Excuse me. He writes him a letter, drops it in his mailbox. The dad, you know, finds a letter. And uh, while he's reading it, you know, the kid was very scared uh, of his reaction. But the f- the nice thing about it is the reaction from the dad was just like, wow. Um one thing they do in this episode in this podcast is they connect with the people from the true story from the actual story to get their um their reflections like you get to hear the person who writes the story and you get to meet the father and hear him um and they bring you back to that day so the dad goes that even though he couldn't understand like he didn't know he couldn't understand it he still was for it like he was supportive. He um, was there for them when they there needed for them the yeah. most. So because uh, the person who the host of the show asked the father, like, 
uh, what what made you, you know, like, how were you feeling when you read that letter? And the dad was like, you know, I, I was confused. I didn't, I was surprised. I didn't know this was a thing. There was no signs of it. Um, and, you know, I never knew, like, how does that happen? Like, how are you gay? The guy was just very naive. Um, mm-hmm. And <laughs> his kids were just telling him, like, you know, you're, some people are born that way. Yeah. And he didn't try to argue it. He didn't try to, like, you know, as some people from older generations try to fight it, or he just was like, you know what? If you if you're gonna tell me that you're born that way, that's, that's all I gotta do is like accept it, uh, accept it. And it's just cool because it's like, you know, everybody has the power to like unite or divide relationships in their family. Yeah. It's up to you to choose that. Yeah, and then the the dad in this this situation actually united it. And that's what he says. He, a, uh, what are you saying? He's, he pretty much said that. He was just like, you know, everyone has that choice of uniting their family or dividing them. And, um, yeah, you can go ahead. The thing is, is that not a lot of families are like that. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people who are still, who, who, who are, you know, who are gay, who, who don't come out to their parents because it's such a hard conversation to hold, especially coming from a straight family. And I, I to be honest, I would love to... No, I I was listening to um, I was listening to a TED talk and where, you know, they were talking about, um, they were talking to the um the Me Too, founder, of the Me Too movement, the founder of the Me Too movement, and how she was saying that, you know, she created this space, um, called the Me Too in order for people who, were abused sexually, you know, at young ages, to feel. Like it's okay because, you know, it's um uh, this is the space to um. It was like to feel like this is the space to be comfortable because it's okay that, it's not it's not okay that it's happened, but, um, we're here because it it did happen, and it also happened to other people. So we're here for you to talk about it, to to listen, to support, first. and to yeah, and yeah. to listen and understand the stuff that 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 happened to them so it's to provide empathy in that space and that's i that's what it was yeah and i was like that you know that's a great message for a lot of organizations to have to unite because it is ugly when we trying to divide and we're trying to be like no you stay in your corner now you stay downstairs you know we much we we build we build we're a lot stronger when we're when we're together, true. Than separate. But now check this out. So, you know, there's a lot of families. We we really don't have that many. Um, a, I wouldn't say we have a huge family, like extended family, like aunts and uncles and cousins. Nah. Or at least, I don't think I met every single nah. one. But there's some families with a lot of extended family members, x amount of aunts and aunt and uncles. And do you ever feel like it can get complicated at times because of the different personalities? Um, complicated in, in what sense? Like speaking to them about? Uh, no, and things still on the topic of uniting. Now, you know, if you have a family where there's hu- there's a huge amount of members, you got you to gotta think, you got to take in consideration that's a lot of different personalities. Everybody besides that being your mom, that's another human, you know? Yeah. That's your aunt, but at the end of the day, she has her own life. So what? You ever think at times it can be complicated? I'm still lost, but if I was to make sense of it right now, like, are you saying that our ways of thinking? Like, just because we're family, we all think differently. Exactly, yeah. So uniting as a whole in order to think the same? No, is I'm that just, complicated? Is that what you're trying to say? Right, because at the end of the day, we're, we're all, all different, different people. people. Yeah, different that's ages. Yeah, that's d- so difficult. So I could see why there's sometimes is even with like sticking inside of a family, I could see why it's hard to reunite. Yeah, there's uh, I, I totally agree. Because you're messing you with a whole different range of differences. Yeah, th- like their whole upbringing is different. You could even uh-huh, think about right. our cousins who lived in the city, opposed to where we lived. Uh, after we, you know, came out the city and lived in upstate New York, their upbringing is so much different than our upbringing, and you can see, you know, we can see the differences in uh, in our lifestyles, 
the way we think, the way we handle our money, the the way we handle our education, the way we handle jobs, opposed to other people in our family. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, environment, and you know who you who you're brought up by has a lot to do with it, yeah. and how you think and who you become. Where do you think it starts? It starts with the. It starts at home. It does start at home. It starts at home. I think when you, I I said this a lot, but when you take any family member out the out the picture, you know, if your father wasn't in the picture or your mother wasn't in the picture, it's a whole different life for that child. You know, it becomes a whole different life in where that child may not understand how to um decompress his emotions to his father if his mother's not in the picture Mm -hmm. or on the other hand if the father's not in the picture that boy or girl doesn't know how to express themselves um in a in a way for, for a boy they can't express themselves um knowing how to get their first haircut you know what i'm saying know how to show that anger but that testosterone you know they can't show that with their mother you know they can't. Yeah, they could. I think you know it's just important for that person who, for the guardian, right, parent, whatever, in that kid's life, to. You know, um, ask or try to give advice when they come and ask you for it. I think a lot of times with my own mom, sometimes, is, she becomes so protective. Mm. that it gets in the way sometimes. And you agree, like, you have the same mom. So mm-hmm. sometimes it kind of, it can get a little offensive because in a way it's like, all right, mom, like, I could, you know, I could... um Fend for myself. Exactly, you know? Yeah. No, nah, I do. I remember when, when, you know, I was growing up, I was very angry towards mommy, you know? And... I just couldn't really, I didn't learn how to express that anger in other ways, but, like, just, you know, just blurt it out. Just here you have it. Um, and I, I would only imagine, I would only imagine if, you know, if we had a consistent, I mean, we did have a stepfather, but from the beginning to the end, you know, if we had a, the same father, how that would have changed those maybe those angry outbursts. Maybe that father could have, you know, wheeled me in and, you know what I'm saying, like talked me down to understanding, like, that's not the way you talk to a woman. That's not the way you do things to your mother, you know? Mm -hmm. And those are the conversations that you may be missing out on when you don't have either or. And that's why I see a lot of that. I see a lot of that in the school. Okay, with little kids. Little but kids, you're also at an, a young age where you don't know how it to doesn't control matter. your emotions. It you know doesn't I mean? matter. Or not even control them because I don't think you can ever control your emotions. But you can control how you act. And it comes with some sort of discipline, which at a young age, you don't know that. You just react. They don't know how to act. But I'm saying the kids could be so traumatized because they still feel trauma, mm-hmm. just in a different different uh, form. But they, they can't express it. They don't know. But when... You know, your daddy's in jail. Like, one of the little girls be saying, I remember when I first started working there, you know, I was like, yo, where's, your, where's daddy? You know, is daddy picking you up? No, he's in jail. Oh, I was like, yo, what? How the hell did this little girl, six, five years old, understand already, you know, what jail is, yeah. what cops are, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What that whole system is already at that young age. That's traumatizing. That makes you feel, it must make, you know, that girl feel, like, hopeless. Like, you know, the father's out the picture. It doesn't matter now, but, you know, that she has no one else else to rely on but her mother. So she's only solely learning from her mother. You need that push and pull. You, yeah, seen. but, you know, do you believe you can get that, you know, that father role from other male influences? Like You could. Your, your priest or pastor at the church. You could. You know what I'm saying? Or... That's much harder though. 
or your it, teacher at the you know at the school or it has to be a consistent i, I consider the guy at the my deli. De- my definite no, <laughs> what the that guy at the deli who's just like a good guy or your cro- the guy who's working the crosswalks who you know talks I consider, to you real quick while he's helping you cross the street no nah, i consider a father a consistent figure in someone's life one who's there for you day in day out it's not someone who goes away it's when they ne- when that person needs you the most that person that male figure is there? Well, I mean, With I don't no mean to get ifs, all no ifs, ands, or buts. I mean, that person is there. I don't mean to get all religious on you, but that's why a lot of people turn to um, religion. God, if you believe in that stuff, is always there for you. And it's funny that we're talking about that now to pivot is because I was reading a little blog um, online. I, let me see. I wrote it down somewhere too. Um, it's called. Uh, the bridge church and i wrote the whole thing that was dope because it was giving you like a different way of thinking about things when you do feel you know we feel like you're filled with anger and stuff like that and this is watch this watch um so it gave like a like a few steps on to how to unite each other in in relationships number one was recognize who is behind the conflicts so that was to say that, you know, you got to remember that who the real enemy is. And it was it was playing against it was playing about um, Satan and the devil and how, you know, most most times we argue is with people. But we got to we got to remember that. It's not really the person that you're arguing with is like the devil and. Here's another trick, you know, trying to divide something that you have between somebody. And I was like, Yo, I mean, that's if, a good that, way. if that's if you, if that's what you believe in, that's a that's a healthy way of thinking of things. That oh, okay, damn, I'm tripping right now. I shouldn't be mad at the person I really love, and we probably get past this. It's you know, it's Satan or whatever who's nah, trying I, to split us apart. I mean, that, I guess number one, but number two was. Uh, isolating us with the feeling of insecurity. Oh, no, never mind. Um, number two was to be the peacemaker. So agree to disagree sometimes. Um, learn to settle problems quickly and just move on. That's another way of, you you know, of uniting. Uh, and I keep read them through. Uh, the next one was look for the good in others and you will bring joy into your life as as a result. That was it? Mm-hmm. Oh, so it was just three. That's a good way of thinking of it. It's a nice system in order for you to break away from um, hating someone. <laughs> yeah. It, you know? And, bro, I definitely... And moving away from your... I tried um number two today about being the peacemaker because, you know, when I read that about learning how to settle problems quickly, I kind of reflected on myself and, you know... um. And how I was acting with Gio like the past two days, how it was just like that tension over I don't even know what, but it was just well, like nothing. tension. Yeah. So I was like, yo, I could have I could have handled that better. You know what I'm saying? I could have maybe dropped it or maybe yeah. stopped antagonizing it at times, or even if it wasn't just me, I could have just like agreed to disagree and move on. Um. So right there after I read that, bro, I was like, you know what? Let me just. In case there is like some leftover tension, which I don't, I, I was cool. Like I didn't think of anything. I was like, let me just send the kid. Let me send him a quick text, just like, yo, I'm sorry for, um, for the way I was acting yesterday, for being very controversial. And he just replied like, yo, no, no problem, bro. Like we good. And that was it. Yeah. But it got you know it got that monkey off my back. Yo. And who knows? That could have been a little thing that. Yo. Um. That the could save your next friendship or relationship. You're right. I mean, the thing I could give it to you, I'll give my my hat off to you, is the fact that you know you you move on from things quickly. You don't hold grudges, and you 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 try to be the peacemaker in a lot of situations. That's not the first, um, but I think that's a great way of looking towards resolving the issue like this. And moving on from getting these angry, be- becoming angry and having these random outbursts towards other people. Because, yeah, I know when you're angry, not you personally, but myself, myself you, all you see is red sometimes. 
yeah. know what I'm saying? It's hard. It's sometimes hard to gauge it back to being positive and like, and just uh, just staying safe, like from saying anything that you re- will regret. It takes work, but yeah, sometimes I be seeing red. I be like, yo, this is my time to just go all out and not throwing hands or nothing, but like say what I have to say. Sometimes saying nothing is the best thing. In my in my defense, that I think so I've too, learned yeah. that saying nothing, let it ta- letting time do its thing, having it pass and wait till the next day, does wonders. But not everybody's like that. There's some people that they try to fix it right then and there because nah, they don't I'm, want it to leak on. You yeah, know what I mean? Persist the next day. Yeah, I'm like that too. I'm, I don't. I'm not for that, bro. I'm not. I'm more like, yo, it happened. Let's just keep. You know what I'm saying? Like you said. Let's go back to wherever we were going. Yeah. You know, reflect on it on your own time. Do what you got to do, whether it's go to the gym, sweat that shit off, listen to music, punch a bum, whatever you got to yeah. do. Or rub one out. Rub one out. Whatever you got to do. <laughs> um, then come back when you're, when that shit's out your system and you're ready to talk. Because right there, I think you're just adding more fuel to the fire, you know, because now you're, you know, you're trying to resolve it right then and there. And if the other person's not with it, now you're mad at the fact that they're not they're trying not, to resolve exactly. it. And then once you start talking, you're you're mad at that. Plus, um, you're mad at the being boy. mad yeah. <laughs> and what happened prior. So it's just all yeah. this. And then you pull back from like things from three months ago that got you tight. Yeah. And, then be like, and yo, you know nah, what you really opened tight. my eyes to that was these two, yo. That conversation they you had. love Jada Pinkett. Bro. They're both like. DM her, bro. Nah, she she's not answering your shit. Don't even think I mean, that I you have know. a chance. You know. have no she, chance with Jada Pickett Smith. She, you don't know, she, <laughs> she's looking for a youngin. No, somebody bro. to keep her up. You know what I'm she saying? She does like the way she looks. She looks really good for her age. Yeah, bro. I mean not picture, but, but her mind is just like something else, right? That yeah, that's why the mind stimulates more than the physical body. Yeah, so it says, I'm not gonna say that part because someone could be so you know stimulating. In conversation and stuff but like that. But parents makes but you they, numb. They look, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they look dumb, ugly. They look trash, buns. But nah, I'm not giving that person a chance. When when do you think unity is most important? Every time, everything we do, it makes the world go a lot. Uh, makes the world a lot, uh, a lot better of a place to live in, and it helps things get done faster. You know, it's just think of everything that's that's occurring. You know, you could think about it in, in this political climate. That you know, everybody's being divided mm-hmm. by the president or, you know, by other groups. But that's not the the way we should be thinking about things. Yeah. You know, but there's also that's one narrative. But there's also another narrative in where, during this climate, a lot of people are coming together. And they're locking arms with their, you know, group culture and accepting other cultures and, and trying to build and trying to resolve things now and for the future. Because, you know, how much longer do we have on this planet? You never know. The oh, human man. race. After all those. I'm being ro- to infinity, bro. Bro, or after all those robot ads on of the Super Bowl. Let's not get started with that. That shit was insane. The amount of robot ads I saw. During the Super Bowl commercials was insane. If that doesn't give you a, uh, th- that's not a cry for help. Like we should be like finding a a ship to get the hell off this planet already because this is insane. All those you gotta stop watching movies, bro. Man, bro, that shit was crazy. You gotta stop watching movies, but that shit was I crazy. To answer my question, I think it's most important. And uh, robots are here. We gotta do something about it. So let's unite and let's get the hell up out of here. No, is robots always been look? That is a robot. If you Nigga, really think bro, about it's it. a physical eye robot in oh, in God. fucking car commercials, like okay. in people's living rooms. So, what? What? That was dumb. Imagine by going to Premier. like the gym and you working out and you see a, a a robot doing ten on ten ten speed with a ten incline, just jogging that shit out, and you over here huffing and puffing with a four speed and a no incline. I, I'm gonna, done. You gonna be salty because the robot yeah. outperforming? I'm just be you? like, oh shit! <laughs> what the hell is next to me? I gotta get out this gym. 
I'm not staying there and I'm not trying to deal with robots. That's scary. And you're going to live in your room and just never leave your house Maybe. for the rest of your life? Maybe. I'm traumatized from iRobot, the movie with Will Smith. That movie. This thing is such a hypocrite. Earlier in this podcast, you were like, nah, I'm somebody who needs adventure. I need to like, I need to, I need to have fun. I got to be doing things. What? And that's the opposite of what you're just saying. Yo, robots scare me, bro. Anyways, um, so yeah, I think it's most important in relationships um, and friendships too, you know, because without those two main things, you're by yourself. And like you said earlier, no one wants to be alone. Imagine this but podcast being done by just me. Nobody would tune in. I don't think any, I mean, some people, you would tune in. Nah. You give me Yo, some can credit. Can you stop I, fucking on my wall, please, bro? This wall is coming down, bro. Because of you. Move stop your doing that shit with spit. Is is what? <laughs> Nigga put spit sliding Move down the up, wall. Bro. No. Damn. But if this podcast was just me, let me look at camera one. Camera one. Hey, you. This is you thinking we speak it. It's just Jerry Lugo. Sign off. But remember to sign on to the other social media links. At you thinking we speak it just Jerry, no Brian. Nah, it sucks. You're terrible. No one's time. Nah, there's no no <laughs> energy in that. It's just like, why is this substitute what? teacher telling me what to do? <laughs> nah, but but yo, um, what I was gonna say? See you two. Oh, what? friendships. So we all have friends, including us, that have fallen off. Wait, for, we still talking? Yeah, for, for except what? no reason. In friendships, do you think you could ever, um, like, you know, unify? You think that's that's a moment of... What do you mean unify? A friendship isn't you know, is Like, if a friendship fall off, is that it? Is there any chance... you think reunite? Reunite. And, co- and come you. back that's together after some falling out? Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, depending how strong your friendship is. Okay. I mean, there's some friendships that you can't come back from. Like Which the one are? we had. With? You know? But an individual that we don't have to put this okay, name okay. into. But, yeah, I mean, you know, that yeah, had a fallen out. And, nah, you, there's so much you could do for that. There's no coming back from it. But there's other, you know, friendships. that that other person is trying to also put the time back into, you know, making it work, I don't know how strong this friendship is. But if it's pretty strong to you and it means a lot to you, then, yeah, why not? I wouldn't want to lose a person like that and, and not make it, you know, work. I agree, I agree. Yeah. I just wanted to see, I had the same answer, but I just wanted to see. <laughs> this thing is like, yes, yes, man. But back uh, what to else my you want to en- talk about? Nothing. I wanted to talk about the ending, how I was going to close this show out. And you had to fuck it up with that dumbass question. Damn. I thought we were going to talk about uh, all this stuff. Like, nah, we saved that for the next uh, episode. Uh, 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 next episode. Whenever we have that, which is going to be next Sunday, and we're doing this each Sunday, we drop the episode on Wednesday, and uh, stay tuned because we're dropping content each week, and we're really doing this on a consistent basis now. Right, 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 so, right. Um, to add to that, you just want to thank everybody who's just been listening, Um, you know, who's been out there, who's been sliding the DMs, yeah. laughing at our posts about violating Gio. That just makes me want to violate him more. So keep sending <laughs> the emojis. Keep motivating me to come out with that video and those pictures and that content. And Yo, yo send us, um, please send us what you want us to talk about. Whether it's one person, two people, three people, we don't care. Send us things that you guys want to hear so we can have these conversations here in my brother's studio. Or yeah, from the You Think It We Speak at Studios, top floor penthouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you come in, you know, to visit, make sure you hit that second floor button. That's the penthouse. Yeah. That'll bring you up here. Actually, it won't bring you up here. I'm going to lie. That'll bring you to the second floor, to my butler. Um, and then he's <laughs> going to bring you up here personally, just security clearances, stuff like that. Um, what but, was I going to say? But, yeah, yo, let us everything? know what you want to talk about. Again, this is a perspective from two brothers you don't see that all the time. Two single. You, nah, single. nah, shut up. Complicated. You knew this. All right, I this forgot. Is, I forgot. He's I forgot. dragging the whole thing out. But two brothers, is, two guys. <laughs> so let us know what you this want. This is you thinking we speak it. Peace. Peace. I don't know why. I don't even know what this means. W like. I'm gonna do. Nah, I don't. I only have one chance, so I can't really flex either. I need to find something cool. 
Yeah. I like the way this feels.